patient to be seen by a fertility expert before embarking on your treatment journey. Bridget Sain, a resident of Nairobi, was diagnosed with cancer in 2016. A prolonged menstrual cycle coupled with agonizing pain were the hallmark of a disease that was slowly turning her cells against her own body. At that time, I didn't know where I was ailing from. What I know, I, I used to have a lot of pain in my abdomen, especially during menses. And my menses could take uh, long. Uh, it can even go for two weeks. And I had a backache and I was feeling tired. Then I didn't know uh, exactly, I didn't pinpoint uh, what I was ailing from. So I decided to go for further tests. And when I went to the hospital, the doctor said that I had an ovarian, uh, ovarian cyst. Like many, she was devastated after the first treatment failed. And as days went by, doctors could not nail a diagnosis of what was preying on her health. She felt like she had been failed by the very field of medicine she had banked her hopes on to help turn her health around. After a series of tests that left her feeling like a lab rat in the hands of doctors who strived to come up with a diagnosis, a stage 3 cancer of the urinary tract was zeroed into. By then I was so devastated I didn't know uh, what I was ailing from and when I spoke to the gyna, he told me that he's going to do uh, a test and, and that's why he did an MRI. And after doing the MRI, it's when it was discovered. Uh, actually, I didn't even have a, a gyna issue. It was a urinary tract issue. And that's why they found um, that uh, I had cancer of the uh, urinary tract. A cancer diagnosis that did not only bring with it eight cycles of chemotherapy and 33 sessions of radiation, but also a toll that surpassed the treatment plan. Ordinarily, it's a devastating news. And at first, I uh, was like uh, in a denial because I didn't know that. I, I have never even imagined that uh, I, w I will have cancer. So when they broke the news, I was, there was a mixed reaction. One, I was happy because at, at long last they have gotten what I was ailing from. But on the other side, there was a denial. And I said, no, it, can, it, it cannot be true. And um, I was with my sister. I, I tried to be brave at that moment and I, I told the doctor that I will come back with a testimony. But after going back to the house, now the reality sank and I knew that I'm going to die. And just like any other patient diagnosed with a disease of such magnitude, her first reaction was to seek treatment. At first they did surgery and they removed the mass. And after surgery now, I went to India now. When I went to India, they wanted to remove my reproductive organs and I refused because they wanted to remove the bladder, uh, the urethra and the part of my human, womanhood and I removed. I, I, I totally re refused and from there now they started treatment. Uh, I started chemotherapy that went for three months. After chemotherapy now, I started radiotherapy and it took like one and a half months. Survival rates for cancer have increased over the years and so is the desire of patients who are in remission to lead at least a normal life. Part of it entailing having children in the future just like in Saint's case who desires to have at least three. That was the most depressing news than even cancer itself because uh, when I went to India, here in Kenya, they told me about the uh, treatment plan that is going to, uh, to be the removal of the ure uh, urethra and part of my organs. And I refused and that's why we went to India. And when we reached India, the story was still the same because that is a standard way of treating that kind of cancer. Because it was uh, stage three, uh, cancer of the urethra that has spread to uh, bladder and the part of my womanhood and I refused comp uh, completely and I said uh, 
no i'm not going to allow my organs to be removed and at some point uh, it's like we, uh, we had a conflict with one of the doctor in india it is one thing to undergo cancer treatment and another to deal with the impact of the modes of treatment on one's crucial bit of life fertility for a very long time, experts say cancer care and fertility preservation were not a common conversation had on the same table. Dr. Gladwell Kiarie, an oncologist at the Nairobi Hospital, explains this correlation between cancer treatment and fertility. Now, cancer dependent on the site of the cancer, for example, if it's in the ovary, um, the breast can affect um, you know, fertility by just the mere fact that the cancer is in a site that has reproductive uh, implications or are involved in reproduction, sometimes even cancers of the brain. Now, two are the modalities of cancer treatment, which involve surgery, which involve use of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, even targeted therapies have certain impact on uh, fertility. Gynecologist and fertility expert at ACES Health Services in Nairobi, Dr. George Ogweno, concurs that modalities of cancer treatment like surgery, use of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and even targeted therapies have certain impact on fertility. Now, there are a lot of things that uh, affect uh, fertility. Uh, generally, we know, uh, apart from diseases, there is the age factor, which goes without saying. Uh, looking at it, there are other many uh, infections, especially in the sub-Saharan area. We have uh, things like sexually transmitted infections that will lead to early uh, uh, problems that will lead to fertility. Now, the major thing that also leads to fertility but has highly been neglected over the recent time is cancer treatment. Yeah? Some cancer per se will affect fertility, but also the treatment has been shown. And that's why the term oncofertility was coined recently. It's not just adults who can be affected by these forms of treatment. Fertility of prepubertal cancer patients can also be affected. Cancer specialists explain that female childhood cancer patients can suffer ovarian damage due to these therapies that can cause premature ovarian failure. Some of the approaches to cancer treatment, for example, in pre battle children who get um, uh, certain ovarian malignancies, uh, part of the treatment involves doing surgery or removal of the ovaries or what we call oophorectomy certain growths in the uh, young people's uteruses also involve hysterectomies. And as we go on with age, that too also in young patients will affect their fertility. Some of the treatments we also do using chemotherapy affects ovarian function. And therefore, even if we are not going to surgically touch the ovaries, we affect the ovarian function. And for example, some treatments of breast cancer in young women, the outcome of treatment is usually better if we push this young patient into menopause and hence they will not be able to uh, carry a pregnancy to term or be able to conceive. Even so, multiple options, as explained by oncofertility specialists, exist that can help maximize a cancer patient or survivor's fertility. Early enough, a lot of things could be done. There is what we call uh, fertility preservation. Now, if you're looking at probably prepubertal girls or, or boys, uh, you have things like gonads. If they're going to be affected, you can have tissue preservation, which used to be uh, a research, but now as, as early as a few months ago, it is a practice in the U.S., and I'm sure even here we can still do it. In other words, tissue preservation can be done for those ones who will require that. Now, if it is post-puberty, -pubert then for women, if you are looking at women, you could do give stimulation with the medication within a very short period so that you don't affect the cancer treatment. And then you can get those eggs. Yeah, we call them gametes. 
and they can pre be preserved. Okay? Yeah. Now, at that early stage, we know the best practice would be to keep embryo. Embryo is a combination of an egg and a sperm, but these are probably uh, 18 year olds so or even a bit less. So issues of that might not be feasible. Even though many cancer survivors are likely to maintain their reproductive potential after successfully undergoing treatment for the disease, others may experience permanent or temporary infertility as a result of their treatment or the disease itself. Some may be permanent, especially if you've had a hysterectomy and oophorectomy. Some of the options we shall offer you later on is, you know, to get a surrogate um, and sometimes to adopt. There are some that are temporary, for example, the ovarian suppression from chemotherapy and certain drugs is temporary and sometimes we can preserve the ovarian function by using certain injections during treatment like gosserinling. So uh, some are permanent, um, cert certain treatments like radiation tend to also give permanent effects. You know, women with rectal cancer who get radiated and they get ovarian radiation. So um, some of that may cause sort of permanent uh, infertility. Uh, certain chemotherapy drugs, once the treatment is over, especially in young people, they get full recovery of fertility. To help cancer survivors achieve their reproductive health goals, fertility experts recommend fertility preservation, a process that entails saving sperm egg or reproductive tissue for later use in this case by a cancer patient after completing treatment to enable them have children in future with the advancement in technology this can be done even after years of treatment if it's tissue normally you need to get it through maybe laparoscopic yeah nowadays there's minimal invasive surgery so you could go in with your laparoscopic and take a small tissue you can even take the whole the whole, uh, the whole ovary, or if if you need to do that, that is being done for here. We've not started doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, th that level. But tissue you can obtain through that. If it is uh, maybe getting the eggs, then uh, of course you do the same way we do with IVF in terms of removing them. So we still do stimulation and uh, we get the eggs through uh, ultrasound and a small anesthesia through an ultrasound guided. And you're able to get your, your, your eggs, okay? And uh, if it's about you wanting to make a baby from them as early as that, then you fertilize and you can still preserve. In other words, you get uh, sperm from somewhere else, either the husband or you can even talk of sperm donors if that requires that. In laboratories like this one, cancer survivors whose fertility is likely to get compromised during treatment get a second chance at life. This is where uh, the process takes place in terms of preparation. Both eggs and uh, tissue uh, where, where needed. So once you get it here, it is, uh, yeah, is preheated to mimic the degrees of the body. So you are literally working like uh, not too far from the body. Yeah, because you know, once you bring out those eggs, they are very sensitive to a lot of changes uh, in terms of heat, in terms of temperature, and even uh, other things that could give them toxicity. So we work on them here. Uh, and there's a microscope, so once you put them here, you are able to see, to see them on the microscope, so you are able to select. Yeah, once they come from there, you select the good ones, if they are eggs, you select from here. And then once you select them, you are able to want now to separate them, so we have several things you use. Then you do your fertilization. Uh, once they've been prepared, then uh, yeah, it contains a very uh, dangerous liquid, which normally you need to keep. You can see how it comes out. 
Just like in the initial stages of consultation for the treatment options available for any type of cancer one is diagnosed with, fertility experts recommend that all patients of reproductive age are sensitized on the risk of reproductive harm and fertility preservation. However, this is often not the case as most patients would get to learn about fertility preservation after undergoing the treatment and not before as recommended. Be your own advocate because there are some of the things that doctors will never mention to you, especially when it comes to fertility. Not unless you are seeing a um, uh, gyna oncologist, but if you're not seeing a gyna oncologist, some of these things, they don't, they don't matter to them. Uh, it's for you as a patient, you need to take initiative and ask us many questions ab uh, about this treatment. How is it go gonna affect your reproductive organ? How is it gonna affect your quality of life? The discussion uh, relating to fertility, fertility should actually be had before any intervention has been done. So once a cancer diagnosis is made in a prepubertal girl, or in boys as well, and in men and women in their reproductive age group, it's very important as part of the preparation for treatment to have the discussion surrounding fertility. It's very good to take a good history. Some people already have had some interventions that already impact on fertility before this. You know, there are women who've had tubal ligation. Maybe they are not interested in having any children and therefore you set that up right at the beginning. They are, you know, even men uh, who may want to uh, preserve their sperms so that later on they can be able to become fathers. There are even women who do cryopreservation of the ovaries. And you see, if that discussion is had before the treatment, then you offer them the best opportunity of becoming mothers. Similarly, the effects of some of the treatments on developing fetuses or embryos has to be considered, as some of the effects of chemotherapy and radiation and some of the drugs may have a negative impact on the embryo and a growing baby, even if conception is achieved after cancer treatment. The time interval before, even if you have full recovery of fertility, before we feel it's medically fit to carry a pregnancy also needs to be determined because some of the effects of chemotherapy and radiation and some of the drugs may have a negative impact on the embryo and growing baby even if fertility and even if conception is actually achieved so that's also a discussion about when should a couple attempt to get pregnant after cancer treatment for example so what we do is that we have a, a procedure where we pull all the sperm cells that are in here overall sensitization not just to cancer patients of reproductive age but also specialists in the oncology space on the importance of consulting a fertility expert before embarking on any cancer treatment will go a long way in giving cancer survivors and patients a chance to have children in the future gloria milimo ktn news